Hey guys, uh, in this video, I'm trying to explain what exactly EFS is. So EFS stands for um, Elastic File System. So you can find this EFS uh, under storage option, just below of uh, S3, you can find this. So basically EFS is a file system where you can mount it to multiple EC2 instances. And you can use that EFS as a centralized uh, file storage system. So, even you can mount it to 100,000, 10,000 of the EC2 instances also. And there is no pre-provisioning is required. And basically EFS supports NFS version 4.1. So that you can mount uh, to only Linux operating systems. So here is simple overview about EFS and how exactly we are going to use and what is the benefits, dynamic, dynamic elasticity. So no pre-provisioning is required and here scalable performance so you can mount it to uh, one of the ec2 instance and you can store all your web content into this elastic file system and you can deliver and you can give a specific throughput between your efs and your um, ec2 instance and you can use it as a shared file storage not only for the instances which is running on your aws account even you can mount it to servers which is running an on-premise network but again, you do have VPN solution or else AWS Direct Connect. So for that, uh, refer to our um, VPC videos. So it's a cost-effective one. And when coming to security and compliance, so we can manage file level permissions and you can share that um, uh, files based on the user access, user uh, permissions on that um, particular thing. So um quickly i'm going to provision an efs and i'm going to mount it to multiple ec2 instances so here is efs and efs it supports only some of the regions for example mumbai it is not yet supporting paris stockholm so it is not supporting at moment so i'm in northern virginia region and here click on create file system of course we have a flexibility you can create a file system in northern virginia so if you have a server in mumbai you can mount it so bad again you need to have vpc peering connectivity between the uh, between uh, your mumbai region vpc and the vpc or running your efs okay so here i have only one vpc and i'm going to create this here so then these all are the availability zones which we have in us east one region northern virginia region so now I want to make this file system available for all the availability zones. And if you don't want to make this file system available for US East 1F availability zone, you can simply uncheck. So whatever the instance you have in US East 1F, you cannot mount or it cannot communicate with this elastic file system. And I'm going to select all the availability zones. And the important thing is security group. So by default, your Elastic file system is going to be a member of default security group. And um, if you want to create any of the security group, if you want to associate, you can give that here. So, but make sure the required port is opened in that security group. So for uh, secure access, we are going to create this EFS in default VPC and we are going to make our EC2 instance also member of the default security group. Then we are going to basically this default security group is a loopback security group. We are going to make our EC2 instance also member of that loopback security group. So by default, the communication is going to happen between this EFS and our EC2 instance. So let me click on next step. And um, do you want to give any of the tags? You can give that. For example, I'm going to use this for uh, the name. I'm going to give it as a so Java. Uh, team CFS. So I'm going to mount this to all the Java EC2 instances or uh, ja Java team used EC2 instances. So then choose performance mode. You can go with the general purpose or else you can select max IO and general performance. So that um, is a recommended for most of the use cases. And if you are going to mount it to tens hundreds of the ec2 instance you can go with this option so i'm just going to create only two ec2 instances so i'm selecting general purpose that is fine for us and throughput mode so do you require a dedicated bandwidth between this efs and your ec2 instance 
Then you can configure that here. If you need a specific bandwidth, you can go with this provision throughput. Then you can give the required throughput here, or else just go with the bursting. And if you want to enable encryption, you can select this encryption again. KMS is a responsible service, so you can go with the default key, or else you can manually navigate to KMS. You can create a key and you can use that key here to keep it simple. I'm not going to use this encryption. And if you want to enable lifecycle roles by using the AWS backup option, you can you can use that option. So at moment, I'm not using this. So click on next step. This is a review screen. And click on create file system. So now this is going to take some time. So basically, in each and every availability zone, it is going to create one elastic network interface to verify that. Let me quickly go to EC2 and here is a network interfaces and if you observe see here multiple network interfaces are creating and the description is efs mount target so these are mount targets so basically it is a virtual interface creates in each and every availability zone so the communication is going to happen by using this network interface so you must give valid communication between your ec2 instance and this network interfaces then only you can mount that file system all right so let me go to instances quickly i'm going to launch a couple of uh, linux instances and i'm going to get connected and i'm going to launch those instances in different availability zones make sure you select free tire only amazon linux ami and i'm using t2 micro and default VPC at one, I'm going to launch in US East 1A, add storage, 8 gigs, and I'm going to call this as instance one. And I'm selecting an existing security group, new SA, which is open with the required ports, review, and launching using an existing key pair. Click on launch instance. Okay, I got my first instance and it is running in US East 1A. Launch instance, Amazon Linux AMI, T2 Micro, and I'm going to run this in another availability zone. But remember, if you have not selected any of these subnet here and your instance is running in the same subnet, you cannot mount it. So if you won't select here, so in ENI, Elastic Network Interface, it is not going to create, so there is no communication with that availability zone hosted EC2 instances. So then add storage, 8 gigs, and I'm going to call this as instance 2. And I'm using an existing security group, review, and launching using an existing key pair. So let me quickly get connected to these instances. And I'm using Putty application. As I'm using Windows operating system. Okay, so let me open Putty and my first instance public IP address given that here and under connection, expand SSH, browse your key pair. So let me quickly browse my key pair and here is a required key pair. Then click on open. I got connected to this instance, and uh, as you are aware, default username is EC2 iPhone user, as this is an Amazon Linux instance. So I'm going to elevate my privileges to root, and um, I want to elevate, I want to update my operating system with latest security patches. All right, this is going to run. Now I'm going to get connected to my instance too. Taking put decision, and this time I'm going to run this with a black background window. All right, so I have elevated my privileges to root and I'm going to update my operating system here in my instance too also. Now, 
I want to mount this elastic file system between these instance these two instances. Okay. So instead of creating a directory and instead of mounting that um, EFS to the directory, what I'm going to do, I'm going to use that EFS as centralized my uh, Apache storage solution. So basically, whenever you create um, uh, Apache web server, so the entire files that is going to store in a location uh, under var www html. So now, what I'm going to do, here is my instance one, and I'm going to install HTTPD, and I'm going to make this as a web server, and this is my instance two, and I'm going to make that one also a simple web server. And I'm going to mount EFS, and I'm going to store all the required web content here that index.html statusx.html i'm going to store into this efs and i'm going to mount that to a path here oops for a path var www.html and here also same so here also to var www.html. Now, when an end user is gonna get connected to any of the web server, here is my user. So he can connect to this web server. He can perform the modifications here and the modifications is going to replicate into this EFS or like another user, he can get connected here and what are the modifications he's going to perform that actually stores here. So it is going to replicate immediately. So this is how exactly I'm going to configure and okay so this is my instance one and this is my instance two so by this time our EFS should be ready just give a quick refresh to know the current status and it is in available and here is a DNS name for our um, elastic file system and if your instances are running in local VPC you can use this instructions and you can mount it and as we discussed we can mount it to another region cc2 instance also and here is an option you can use this and you can mount it but make sure vpc pairing is established between those vpcs and if you are mount if you want to mount it to an on premise here is a mount instructions here is a mount instructions so then so my instances are running in same VPC, so I'm going to use this. And if you are using Amazon Linux AMI, you need to install this package, Amazon EFS Utils. And if you are using Red Hat or SUSE Linux, you can use this. And if you are using Ubuntu, you can use this. And if you are using Amazon Linux AMI, you are going to get that NFS Utils by defaultly. So now, first let me make this instances as a simple web server. So I'm going to install HTTPD package on my first instance as well as my second instance. So then I'm going to start the service, service HTTPD start. And I'm going to make it as a logon service. All right, let's verify that. So here is my um, instance two public IP address. And I got that um, test page, Apache test page. Let me verify the same with instance one. Okay, so it's working fine. So now let me mount this file system. So just scroll down here, you can find using NFS client. So just grab this till here. So if you are creating a directory called EFS and if you want to mount to the directory, you can copy everything and you can just paste there. So, but I'm going to mount it to var www.html path. So uh, this graph from here, copying, and I'm in my EC2 instance one, giving that here, give a space, and I'm going to mount it to var www.html. Let's try to mount, click on enter. 
it's going to take some time it's going to it, it's try to mount it's try to mount and it's going to fail the reason is our i have manually cancel this by pressing control c so this file system is running with a security group that is a default security group and these instances are running with the security group and there is no direct communication between these two so what you can do either you can edit your efs security group that means default security group you can just go here you can open the required ports with the nfs and all so then you can give your ec2 instance security group or public ip address or else you can do one secure thing whatever the security group uh, whatever the instance you're running make that instance also member of default security group so here i'm going to networking chain security group so now it is running with this security group and i'm going to make it member of default security group also assign security group for first and second instances networking chain security group default assign security group all right now let's try to mount it There you can see it is success so now let me do the same in my instance too okay so i lost that and give a space var www.html oh it's already mounted here let me do that for uh, another one okay so now i can go inside that and i am i'm going to create let me go inside and if you give ls there is no data why because we just mounted and we have not created any data and let me let me verify the same here also i'm navigating to var www.html and when i give ls no data available here so i'm going to create a file called uh, index.html click on enter press go to insert mode and i'm going to create very very simple html uh, file and i'm giving title efs demo and i'm giving a simple header EFS test. Make sure you close the header and make sure you close that HTML escape colon write and quit. So now I created this index.html file from my instance one. And if I give ls, fine, that file is available. Let's go to instance two and give ls. There you can see that index.html is available here also. Why? Because the actual file is stored in efs and we have mounted the dfs here now you can go here grab your ec2 instance to public ip address so it is delivering and instance one that is also delivers the same content now if you go here in any of the instance for example i'm creating a simple text touch a dot txt and if you go to another instance and if you verify you can find that file there you can see a.txt is available here so the actual data is not going to store in this local machines it is going to store in elastic file system and uh, if you want to manage permissions or if you want to restrict something we have to perform file level permissions management so highly chances to get this in your certification exam okay and uh, there is unlimited storage available for this efs and it supports nfs version 4.1 for windows operating system you can use fsx so we have a video for that so if you want to use the same mechanism for windows operating systems windows ec2 instances go to that video that's it for this video guys thanks for watching please subscribe for more videos on amazon web services Thank you.